All righty now then. I got it together. And see, it does. It will go like you can adjust. I had, before I had it just too tight. And so I couldn't turn. But if this will adjust either way, I mean, you can leave it flat or you can adjust it to where. This is a pretty nice little hoop if you ask me. Okay, so, but see, then I can, I can get it adjusted to where, where it'll be comfortable for me. So, now, also, I learned that you don't have to have it hooked to both sides. You can have a small hook on, hoop on here, and just have it hooked to one here, one, one piece, and you can be working on a small hoop, or even a big hoop, I don't know, but, um, but then I was thinking, you know, this is going to be cool, too, for things like sometimes I'm doing, like, I braiding, like I do some braiding. I'll take um, pieces of torn fabric and I braid it like this stuff, you know, braid that stuff. And But you always have to have the one end hooked to something. This will work for that. So I'll be able to do that, too. Ooh, get that out of there. And, um, okay, so now I have already been playing with this for a while. And as you see, there's nothing on this fabric because I have pulled it out and then put it in and then pulled it out and then pulled it in and put it out and, put, and on and on and so forth and so on. But now I have my needle. The needle comes with the, with the handle and the needle. It came with three different ones, but they look like they're all the same size. I guess maybe they just might break. I don't know. But like a very thin crochet hook is what this needle looks like. Just a small little crochet hook. So what you do is you put that hook in there, and then you tighten this set screw right here. But what you want to do is make sure that the hook is facing. It's sharp. It's sharp like a needle. And it's a hook, but you want that hook to be right here where this set screw is. So they're lined up. That way you know what you're doing underneath. Now, see, mostly this is done like this with some kind of sheer fabric. It's done on lace. They do it on like wedding dresses. When you see all the sequins and beads on wedding dresses, this is what they do. They use this. Well, some actually just stitch them on with um, stitch them on with a needle and thread. But this is the well. They say some kind of French things or something. I've watched a couple different instructors on the YouTube to try to get the, a hang of this, and um, they have different ways of of teaching, but. Now, I'm using this thread, which is, it's a sulky, sulky thread, um, machine thread that you would use like on a, maybe you would use this on a machine embroidery. And so, well, but it'll stay right down there. And some people have like a little spindle they put it on, but it'll stay right in here because it's indented there, so it's not going to get lost. And so then you um, put the thread, you, you get the thread, and you um, get it around so you're holding it tight right here. And then you go, now I don't have no, no image or anything on here. But now some people said that they do it on regular fabric. Once you get to knowing how to do this and get the feel of the hook, you can do it on regular fabric, any kind of fabric. But it's mostly done on a sheer fabric like this or lace. Or I don't know what this is even called. It's called something. But anyway, so I'm going to poke my hook right through there. Right through there. And then we'll snag it onto that thread underneath. And then when I pull it back out, I'm going to kind of push the, um, the needle, the hook, against the back of the, of the, um, this fabric. Because then you won't, 
you have less chance of, now I, I need all the help I can get, but you have a less chance of snagging the fabric when you push it just a little on the back. So then I want to hold this piece I just threw through pulled through there. I will hold I want to hold that kind of tight for right now because now I'm going to make now and I've and I've seen a couple different instructors some go on one side and then on the other side and then start and, but then then one guy that I watched he just now he's going to put a put a little stitch in the back. So I'm going to go far forward this way. So here's the back stitch. I'm going to um, put my hook down in there, and then I'm holding on to it. I twist, I twist that thread around that needle underneath, and then I'm going to push my. See now, I got my. I I'm going to push it. I got my my um pull my hook kind of pointed to what I would say nine o'clock and then I'm going to pull this up through but kind of pushing it a little against the fabric um, behind it. Um, Elizabeth just made a big fat mess. Elizabeth's got her. Elizabeth's going to start over. Okay now let's get this tight. This is my first day. My first day of kindergarten. Okay, so I'm going to, let me see what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this, oh, I'm going to put this, I'm going to have my little um, screw thing pointed to 12 o'clock, okay? This is my clock now, 12, 6, 9, and 3. Okay, that's my pretend clock. Okay, so I'm going to have my, my hook. Hold on to my thread. It's the only time you got to hold on to the thread. It's just so you get it in there. Okay, so I got it through. Then I'm going to go. I'm going to have my needle pointed. My hook, my screw is pointed to 12 o'clock. Underneath here, I'm going to twist that around there counterclockwise. In England, they call it anti-clockwise. Then I'm going to turn this so it's pointed to the 6 o'clock, and I'm going to pull it through. And there it's through. Now I'm going to go back. Now I'm going to start going forward. So i got my, my hook aimed to six, 12 o'clock. Hook it down in there. Wait a minute. Why don't you? Okay. Wrap it around, turn it to the six o'clock, but sort of pushing your hook to the 12 o'clock so that it's like not going to get all hooked up and tangled. And then, okay, then I got it up back again. No, I don't. I have a complete mess. Oh, wait, how come that thread's down there? Okay. Y'all erase that what you just saw. Okay. Erase that part. Don't 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 pay no mind. Don't pay any mind to what's the matter. Okay, now let me see. Okay, I want to go down below that where it comes through. And I'm gonna wrap it. Pull it through. Now I'm gonna go ahead to the direction I wanna go. And I'm at twelve o'clock, wrap it. Turn it to 6 o'clock. Kind of push it toward. Okay. Elizabeth thinks she needs to turn this computer up. But Elizabeth's going to tr put on her glasses. Glasses might be very helpful. Let's see. Here we go. Now. Now then, okay, we still have this through. Another thing I noticed, even when the professionals that I watched were doing it, that it looks, oops, I'm going to just go through here. Looks like your, your fabric is kind of making holes. Well, it's not. When you go like this, it just, 
all it is is moving the threads. Okay, I want to hold this thread, and I'm going to put a locking hook in there. So, I'm going to put my needle in there, my hook, 12 o'clock. I'm going to go around it one time, and I'm going to pull it back. Oh, then I want to pull it through. I had to turn it. Wrap, no, 12 o'clock, wrap, 6 o'clock, pull it through. Now go ahead, 12 o'clock, wrap, 6 o'clock, pull it through. 12 o'clock, wrap, 6 o'clock, pull it through. 12 o'clock. Wrap, 6 o'clock, pull it through, 12 o'clock, wrap, 6 o'clock, pull it through, 12 o'clock, wrap, 6 o'clock, pull it through. What I do. Oh, see, I snagged it on the fabric a little bit. Okay, get back into that. Let's see. Put it through there. 12 o'clock wrap. 6 o'clock pull it through. 12 o'clock wrap. 6 o'clock. through. Okay, see? Now I have made, I, I've got it. I've made that little bit of a chain stitch right there. And it's hard to see, isn't it? Um, I did that little bit of a chain stitch going from here to here. Now, if I had an image drawn on here, I could go right around that image. And so I'm going to be practicing just this chain stitch. And um, I'm going to practice that. And, and you got your thread on a, on, a, on a spool already, so you don't have to worry about keeping adding new thread. But now, when it comes to putting sequins on or whatnot. See the thing too is you gotta you gotta make sure that you don't hook with the hook you wanna make sure that you're you hook it through then you wrap turn it through to the opposite way that you're going and then get it pulled back through kind of pushing backward on there so that you don't snag the fabric or the thread because if you snag the fabric or the thread then it makes for a little problem but I can see how this can be really awesome and um, and I'm not going to mess with trying to put on sequins yet. Now, when you put on sweet sequins, then I believe you're going to then you're going to have to cut your thread because you got to thread your sequins on below. You sequin because so this is the top of my um, of my piece. This is the top of my piece now. But if I were going to put sequins on, I'd want the sequins on the top, but I would have to turn my hoop upside down so that because my sequins would go in, in at the bottom. And so I'm going to practice that too. But just this for right now, because I'm going to practice getting this chain stitch. And I'm just going to stitch and stitch and stitch and stitch and stitch just 
just for funsies. That's what I'm going to do on there. But I think I can get this. I think I can get this. And then there must be a way to knot off this extra piece right here. I would think that you would pull it through. But I'll read and to make sure that I know what to do with that extra piece where I started. So I'll need to know how to end the thread and to take care of this beginning thread. <coughs> but that's why you need to have a hoop that you, it's kind of stable there that you can get under and over it and be able to do this. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, I don't have any purpose that I would do these things with except maybe make some kind of like an applique and then cut it out and then um, cut it out and then sew it to something else. I really don't even know that. I don't think that far ahead ever. I figured, you know, you, you just never know when you're going to walk out the door and get run over by a train. And so, you know, you don't have to think too far ahead because tomorrow a train might GPS be going bad on the, yeah, you just never know. And so anyhow, that's all I wanted to show you. But look at there. I got that, and I like that right there. So I'm going to just continue to play with this chain stitch. But look at that. With that chain stitch, how pretty. You can um, you can take a, a piece of, of, you can write your name or something and stitch your name. But like I said, you, it, you don't really have to. Most of it is all done on some kind of a sheer fabric like this. Some kind of a sheer fabric. Wedding dresses and saris. A lot of saris are done with beads and sequins. And this is how they put them on with this, what they call the um, tambour, tambour beading. And so, um, but you can see on this picture that whole frog is done with tambour beading just with beads and sequins and stuff. It's all done on that little frog. And so I think it would be fun to do, even if you don't have any plans to do anything with your frog. And look at this image here. It looks like um, waves and water or a night sky or something. But it's all done with beads. It's all beads. And it's all done with that simple chain stitch. This chain stitch is the only stitch you need to know. As far as I know, because this chain stitch is what attaches your beads and your sequins and everything to it. And I'm just learning it. I sure ain't teaching it because I don't know nothing about it except for this right and that's what I know. And I only learned that just right now with this camera running on there. But I think it looks really, really good right now. And, um... And I just, I got a couple pieces of this stuff, but then I've also got lace, too. So I got a couple pieces I can play with and um, see what all I can figure on it. So I guess when you do, you got to practice your tension to make sure you got your tension right. And that you know that the hook, the hook is facing the same way as this little set screw. And so... And, and by when you get to doing that real good is when you can use one guy I was watching, he said he's done it on suede, put things on suede, which you can't see through suede for sure. But you get to feeling you, you, you're looking at your set screw and you're feeling underneath it and, and being able to do that, you can, um, you can make your design or whatever you like to do. So I'm going to play with this. I just wanted to show you that I got this here figured out. I got this here figured out, and I like this. I like this. I think this is going to be really, really a nice thing. I think I'm going to have fun with this. I'm going to have fun, fun, fun doing with this. And like, I, you know, if you, you'd have to have a smaller hoop, but you could put on a corner of a handkerchief and put a monogram. Some fancy people do that, you know, monogram on their, not right, I mean their handkerchiefs, and, um, you know, stuff like that with a smaller hoop or whatever. But I'm going to play with it. I'm going to, I'm going to look more through this here book that I have, because this is like for beginners, and it's, a, and it shows quite a bit of interesting, um, 
different lessons in here, and I'm going to look through this, and I'm going to, you know, once I got a feeling, a lot of times when I'm learning something new, I have to, I can read through the whole book and all the instructions and not have a clue, but if I'm actually working hands-on, hands-on, and then go to the book, I mean, I get the main idea, then go look at the book, it all makes more sense to me, and so, um, and so like this book is, a, it's a classic art of India, and the one guy that I, um, just watched, he said it was France, so who knows where that come from, everybody's going to claim it, I'm going to claim that I invented it myself, well, I will really do that because I don't think anybody believe a word I said. Okay, so I'm going to read your story. Just a minute. i got to find my book. My storybook. Just a minute. You know, I should always have things just ready, which I do always have things ready. It's just they're, they're like buried and stuff in the book that I want is not there. Oh, good grief. Where's that book? I'll use this one again. Although this one, oh yeah, this is the one I was looking for. I'm such a dweeb. Okay, let, oh, let's read this one. It says, The Comforting Spirit. Whatever the need in the sorrowing heart, such groanings of spirit defend their own part. When thoughts are unsettled and teeming with fear and grieving, mood, grieving moods plague air, the mind of its cheer. When self would abandon its faith in the night, the sentry of mercy is armed for the fight. An indwelling presence moves into control. From pain in the spirit comes peace in the soul. That was written by Roxy Smith. I will not love you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. John 14, 18. There was a word in there that I don't know if I said right because I've never seen it before. Plagier. P-L-A-G-I-A-R. I now see I have to look up that word because I don't know what that meant. And so that's the little reading for today. And I'm gonna play with this some more. Um I'm gonna play with this some more and till I get perfect as I feel like I need to be. And then I'll I'll tell you I'll show you later on something else. You never know what I'm going to be doing because I never do the same thing two days in a row. I've got so many things going in my life, but it's fun. Today all I did was sleep all day because I didn't feel good, but I feel better now. I feel much better now. I guess I just needed some sleep. Okay, I ask God to watch over each and every one of you, every step you take, every move you make, and find something to do. It doesn't even matter. If you're gluing stuff together, sewing stuff together, whatever, may God watch over you every step you take, every move you make, and keep you safe and secure and happy and healthy and well-fed and all of those good things. And smile. Keep smiling. Just keep smiling. And I love you all. Come back again. <laughs>